Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're gonna continue on this Suzuki DS80. Uh, I think the year's between like a 90 and a 92 that I grabbed at a yard sale a couple weeks ago. Uh, 10 year old had it, you know, I'm sure he had it when he was six also. But anyway, it's been ridden, well ridden. I wouldn't say well loved, but well ridden and put back together like a 10 year old could put a bike back together when things start to break off. So <laughs> it's been an adventure, we were getting there. On the first video, we got the uh, carb squared away, the fuel system squared away. The exhaust was ripped out of the head. Both studs were pulled out, then redrilled on an angle and drilled out again. So that kind of stuff was fixed. Got an assessment on it. Had oil leak that uh, we thought the case was actually leaking on, and they ended up just tightening up the drain plug on the bottom, and that stopped this leak. So it's been sitting for a few days, and nothing has dripped out of the bottom of it. So that has been taken care of. The back wheel is a mess. It, uh, it's probably the next thing that we should jump on to get this thing rideable. A couple of things. The spacer between the two bearings is missing, so you can't tighten the axle down, because if you do, it binds up on the bearings. So they didn't tighten the axle down. They ran it that way. And when they did that, the two keepers that keep the rear wheel in place is those guys they hold on to the axle and you have a ju adjustment nut they go here and here and you adjust the angle of the wheel and then you tighten the axle down well if you don't tighten the axle down because you can't then it's all relying on these and as you can see it's supposed to be flat it drew that right in and cocked the wheel sideways and kind of chewed up some stuff so we gotta fix that the bearings i think are okay the brake hub there was no rear brakes hooked up to it and it is missing the lever it's missing the bar that supports the drum from spinning the axle does not fit the space that's in between there i'm not sure what went missing from that part of it the spacers that were spacing the wheel out were just a bunch of different things there is a bearing there's a little piece of nylon there's a piece of steel this one piece might be original i don't think the other are, are. so Let's get the back wheel kind of squared away, see if we can get a drive to the back tire fairly decent. Also, we're not quite sure if that swing arm is racked or not. I think what we're gonna do is we'll fix the back wheel first. We'll bolt it all back together and we'll see what kind of alignment we get with the chain. As long as that's become straight, we should be good to go. All right, enough babbling, let's get to wrenching. Well, the first thing I think we should jump on is getting the spacer in the middle of the wheel squared away. Let's see if that'll sit in there. So we got to go punch out one of the bearings. Where it's right about. Yeah. And get an idea what the depth is between the two of them. So in between both of those bearings, we need a spacer, but the spacer has to be pretty exact to the size of the gap that's in between because it has to tighten. Say this is the spacer. It has to tighten on this inner race because the inner race sits still and the outer race keeps moving as the bike's rolling. So the spacer that's in between, we have to cut right to the right size. I'd say we probably go down with a mic, yeah, a caliper rather, on the tail end. We'll run it down. We're, we're going to just kind of guess as close as we can with a probably a, a sharpie mark on it. We'll cut it a little large and we'll trial fit it. We'll just kind of take a little bit off till we get a nice fit. I'm sure there's a much better way to do this. But that's not working. What we're going to do, <laughs> we're going to guesstimate our way through this whole project. I'm gonna call it right there. So that's the gap we need. A smidge more. Welcome to the metal horde. Somewhere in here, we should find something that will fit the bill. Yeah, it looks like a little. That's kind of easy. I mean, actually, I was thinking it might be too big, but as long as it touches on the the inner race, it'll be fine. Yes, I just want to make sure that I only touch on this inner race. I actually think that'll be just fine. 
to work out for us. You want to be hitting on the, the cage, dragging on the cage. All right, see what we get. And if I screw it up, we even got another piece left over to go try yet. All right, so we need all of this stuff together in a straight line. Let's do it. Probably what we should do is take a measurement right there, right now, and see. You know what? Let's go see if there's any pressure on the. Yeah, it's got pressure on it. I can't push it out with pushing down on it. Let's. Can we pop that right back out again? Let's drop that in without the spacer. See how far down it drives? Oh, we got a lot to go. All right, I'm going to sneak up on that. I'm going to go measure the difference between the two of those, the higher and the lower. Try and try to knock it off of here and get as close as we can without going under. New toy. Well, one that's 75 years old anyway. You're going the wrong way. Call that for a win. Well, two of the four bolts for the sprocketer missing. It's got little keepers that you're supposed to go across and hold them from backing out. Let's go pull some out, see what they look like, because we're going to need more bolts that are that size. That can't be good. Let's go see if we even have threads down in these two. If that's the case, we'll leave that one alone if it doesn't want to move. Let's uh, go clean that up on a wire wheel first. So I'm gonna, it was the one across from it, right? Let's go try. What we'll do is we'll feed them in by hand. We'll just kind of see what we got a feel for threads, see if anything are boned out, see if it tightens up. That one's good. Good. Dig up some of them. So out of all that, the closest I found were those two are slightly over. I'm gonna cut them down to the right size and we're just using them. And I also found some metal strapping and whatnot. We need to make some kind of keeper so the bolts don't want to back out. So those are good. I was thinking about trying to make some metal straps, you know, hammer them flat and make a tab going to each one of them. You bend them up so they won't turn. But that one, I don't want to try taking out. I think we're going to snap it if we screw with it. I don't think it's going to move anywhere. The other three, what if we take maybe like a fender washer and we'll notch the fender washer to the 
inner hub and then we'll bend over a lip on it. So each one could be independent of each other instead of having the one that's supposed to scab the two of them. Think that'll work? Let's give it a try, see what happens. Hopefully one of these will do it. There's three of the same size. Maybe those. These are gonna be too small, right? Not that we can't drill it. Let's go screw with the ones that we have, these three, see if they'll work for us. That should do it for us. We use this to shave a little bit so the washer can't turn. We'll mark that with a Sharpie. Let's see, we go about. That's about what we need right there. I'm gonna go notch them on the grinder. Yeah, something like that. I might have to take a little bit more off. Let's go see. Actually, as long as it bolts down, right? That'd be good. And we can kind of bend it over to stop it. Could have been a lot smaller, too. There's a joke there. It may be ugly, but she's big boned. Yeah, at some point it's gonna have to come apart anyway. The sprocket's all, you know, getting cooked, so the teeth are leaning and wore off. So at some point that's gonna have to go come out of there, but at that point we'll deal with it then. For now, I think that'll stay just fine. Onward and hopefully upward. Forward. So that's what's inside the wheel. Although the axle doesn't spin, it gives you an idea of what will be in there. So that is supported in the hub. And this is the, the section that's turning, everything else is staying still. But that gap has to be pretty damn close because what happens is if I left it alone, over time from the wheel pushing back and forth and the aluminum being stops being in a little bit further, it'll start pounding itself to death and then the outside of the race of the bearing will be loose in this surface. That's why it's got to be pretty close to no movement. All right, let's go put that together. And we got to get the spacers, figure out what we're doing for spacers and the swing arm. So let's go start working on that, getting the chain to track straight. But first, <laughs> so this goes in the frame, it looks like. The square part of the frame. And this is your jack screw for you holding your tension. The one that was on the chain side, which is where all the torque is. Looks like either it probably broke this or is missing. And then they put a washer there. And then, as you see, it kind of tucked its way into place. I'm going to do my best to straighten this out, get this apart. We'll fix this one up and then we'll put this one on the heavy load side, the one that's still got its original bits and pieces to it. And we'll come up with something a little bit um, better supported for the other side. Break it, just make it stronger.
So there's mocked up on the bike with just without the wheel in there and our adjustments. We'll cut this later once we know how much we need for adjustment. Actually, probably just run it all the way in and whatever the length is, we'll nip them. Still not cons uh, sure that that swing arm is not tweaked to the side. I do know it. This side has an extra kick out probably for the sprocket, but this looks like it's a little bit too far that way. We'll find out once we put the wheel on and see if it tracks with the uh, sprocket. As long as we get everything to go in a straight line and, and track, it'll be fine. You know, the bike might, it's a dirt bike. <laughs> but before we go any further, this opening is way too sloppy on that axle, like it's missing a bushing or something. So let's go try to make something probably that will take up that space. I think if you can tighten down on everything, it'll keep the brake drum kind of square, but it just seems like that that's way too much, you know? Although, like I said, when you go to bolt it down, it, it'll, it'll probably lock the drum straight. But I don't want to rely on that. Let's go see if we can go find something to go take up some of that gap. I got a thing of miscellaneous bushings we could try. Before we go anywhere, we'll take a quick look up here. This is where I do. When I take something apart, I throw it over here. It doesn't even have to be brass. Steel could be in. Oh, that one. What's that? We'll take that, that. I think that first one probably looked better though, huh? Man, I think they're all the same. Actually, not too bad. That big one's gonna be too much, right? Yeah. Let's go see what we get. Yeah, it's gonna be a little over. Of course it is. Could take it down in the lathe. Is that one to go get punched out yet? I'd probably like to leave whatever's there, there. It seems like it's got a Aluminum to steel, pretty good fit on it. So I measured it out. It's only thirty thou difference between the two of them. This is actually like a a split. I don't even want to call it spacer that's got a split down it. What if we take a cutting wheel? We just take a cutting wheel, zip down there, make a little bit more room, see if it'll just kind of crush up and fit in there because it is got some play on the axle too. So that'll take some of that out. See how it works out. Oh yeah, <laughs> right on the money, awesome. We'll cut the length that we need. I'll run that flush. I'll take one last look at the uh, wheel, make sure there's nothing funky. I'll run that flush and we'll just cut it off on the other side. So that surface in there would touch the bearing when it's in. Right now it's touching on the wheel and that's how it was. Actually, no, it had a bearing in it. Uh, let's go pop the bearing in, we'll see where the height of this is, we can probably adjust this a little bit. If we need a little bit of space, we can tap it down a little bit. It's pretty good. There's a, just a hair. I'm going to go a little. Proud of that a little more. Give myself a little bit more space. That's pretty good. That's about sixteenth. You mean eighth? About, about an eighth of an inch away from rubbing. So we'll leave that as our space. 
So I got rid of the, the plastic bushings and bearings and crap that they had on. There's one heavy spacer is in and I just left that length sticking out that we had to work with. It actually looks pretty good. The chain's kind of crappy. I don't see a mining. If anything, it could probably kick, the tire could probably kick that way, just a hair. Either that or, the, like we said, the swing arm is out a little bit. But I'm going to try eyeballing down the tire to the front wheel and see how we track them so I can get that lift out of our way. Again, it's a dirt bike. I don't think we're going to have to get that picky with it, but we're trying to get as close as we can. I got to make a spacer for the inside here because this is going right into the inside of the frame. So I got to come up with a, like another washer or something for there to take up some space. I say next on the agenda is rear brakes. It's kind of tight, so there's drag on this arm. We need to make this arm stop from turning. When you hit the brakes, uh, something has to stop that energy from wanting to spin that brake drum. And usually either they're key, uh, keyed into the uh, swing arm or they have an arm that attaches from there to there, which is missing. But I have this parts wheel off of something. I, I think it's a moped. And we'll go take this out of here. We'll see how this kind of lines up for this dimension. Possibly you could use it and then we'll come up with a brake lever to come around and hook to the brake pedal. Well, we're definitely going to throw a bend in it because it kicks that side pretty far. If we were to go, we could rotate this without changing its length. Actually, that's not too bad. Let's see what we can do for putting a lever. Actually, I could probably throw the old bolts that came with this on it. There you go. We get that easy? So close, but so far. How about in that lower section there? There you go. Same size. There we go. So that can be the lower one. And we could shorten this one up too. I don't think see why not. Why we can't uh, re-drill a hole. But we'll just work with what. That bracket has for now that's got to get opened up too. We're gonna drill through that. It's got an offset. Can I do that? That's probably what I'm supposed to do, right? As long as it doesn't have play in it, and yeah, it's got a little. Because you don't want it to, every time you hit the brakes, to have a little bit of room to shift. I think what we'll do is I'll drill that out. How does that fit on there? Good, yeah. All right, let's go see about getting some kind of lever up on here and going across and hooking to this. I just flipped it around so the spacer is on the other side of it. Yeah, should we get this? No play in the system forward and back now. We need a brake lever to do something like that. Let's go shopping. This is a parts bike for future chopping up of this. Let's go steal this rod. It's already got a spring and all the knuckle on it. And then we'll steal this guy right here. I don't know if that. It's going to be the same size, but we're going to go find out. Make it work. I hit this in the wire. We will clean it up a little bit. Let's see where that puts us in for a window. And if we go... We've got to be out by the threads. And how far does that pull before the brakes come on? Pretty far. Let me go. Sometimes these are keyed. There'll be like one tooth that is squared off, so you can't change position. 
Because a lot of people do that to cheat when their brakes are uh, failing. <laughs> Let's uh, eyeball that. I'm going to go tap that on one location, see if we can find a happy spot for it. And after everything's tightened up, that should work out pretty good. I had to kind of bend the rod a little bit to clear this, which gives it a little bit of a springy action, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. I don't know if it was a straight shot before or not. I don't know how it could be because that's, that's the stock location on that side. Unless this lever was super long or it curved, you know, way down around here. Again, that'll work. So I think the next thing we should probably screw with is the fact this is going to hurt. Smack yourself with the vice grips. But the end of the shifter is gone. It's not even there. So it looks like it got sloppy on there. Then they drilled through it because you can see a cavity right in the center of it. They drilled through it, probably put a bolt through the shifter, and then that wore its way and snapped its end off and screwed it even further. So what are you going to do to fix it? I think we're just going to uh, hit it with heat and glue the two of them together with a, a welder because this shaft is already shot. You'd have to take the motor apart and, and to change this out. So I think we just go find a happy position that this will be comfortable for on our foot. We'll weld that on. Later on, if you go to go change it, you're just gonna go come back behind it and just cut it with a sawzall or a whiz wheel. And it's still the same thing. You're not hurting anything. I think that'll be our best bet. We probably should get this cover on and put everything on because it's gonna be committed. <laughs> We're gonna commit when we go to uh, Put it together so yeah let's go get that on there and hopefully maybe we could even leave it in a position where the cover is, is removable in case we have to uh, get into here for something it's going to be tight because it's got that arch right there oh well i'd say I'm gonna go get rid of this and just put my foot up there, see how it feels. You gotta figure with a kid's foot too, is it gonna be too far forward? I guess you could always cut it and move it forward and weld it if you have to. This bike looks small on me. Actually, I don't think that'd be too bad right there. Good. Let's just see if that cover can come off. Plus, it'll probably get easier to get a little weld on it right now. Just barely. Okay. Now I can get in there and zap it right down there. I think we have everything done that needs to be done so it would mechanically ride other than hooking up a gas tank. So I think we can start chasing that stuff now, getting into the the little bits, the plastics and the fenders and that kind of thing. I know, well actually it's got one good one here. The one on the other side is stripped out. It's for the gas tank mount. It's got a busted bolt. Got to go deal with that. Uh, Air cleaner setup. Yeah, that one's busted in there. We'll probably try drilling that out. It looks like somebody actually tried before us. So gas tank, change the oil. Uh, may want to tighten that up. It's probably how the other side broke over there from that same reason it was sloppy. Left loose like that. Yeah. Front brake seems like it functions okay. I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll leave that alone. Again, when we test drive it, we'll figure out if there's any other things. The clutch has some free play to it. 
and it does seem to work but again we'll find out that later when we go to ride it tires are going to run them like they are living on the edge until i find some other ones that swap meet all right what are we doing gas tank so fortunately the gas tank is plastic we don't have anything to deal with as far as you know rust can Rust is concerned. I don't see anything, any cracks or anything in it that's obvious. A little beat upness inside. Yeah, a little bit of dirt down there. On that side too. Good. It's got a, a valve on it. On off valve. But it is missing. The handle is broken off of it. As long as it works, you might be able to turn that with pliers. I'm not sure. Or just leave it alone. We'll just leave it in the open position that it is right now. And to mount the gas tank, it has these two spots. And that might be it. It might have just a strap that goes around. Sometimes you have a black strap that you pull over and you lock down on it. Might be something that was missing right here. See if that'll move on. It did some kind of weird turn. If somebody breaks off a bolt when they're tightening it, you have a fairly good chance of trying to get it out with easy up. Somebody breaks a bolt off when they're trying to back it out. Usually the threads are already so gummed up or rusted or corroded that even if you, the reason why the bolt broke in the first place is because it was jammed in the hole. You put an easy out in it, you're not going to go get it. Let's go see what happens. Let's go tap one in there, see if that'll go for us. Sometimes the reverse drill bits work too. Let's see what we get. I think we got it. Nice. Yeah, so they, that got broke when it was getting tightened down. Pretty sure they're all that easy, right? Yeah, we would have been there a while. <laughs> Trying to drill for that one, huh? Good. Now we know what size thread they are too. So we need two bolts, uh, roughly that, plus another half inch to go through those rubber grommets, and probably some big washers for the outside. Come out, come out wherever you are. Two volunteers. Actually, I went around to a little bit of shop and got a bunch of uh, metric hardware that's going to be fitting for all the bits and pieces that everything that was tie wrapped on we're going to need a bunch of stuff anyway so let's go see how that works out for us as far as these they probably had a shoulder on them because that hole inside there is much bigger it would have looked something like that that's not right unfortunately it's the wrong scale but that's what we need to reproduce so we could probably take a couple of bolts and i don't know maybe we can get a nut that can fit I don't know if we can get a nut that'll fit inside there of uh, maybe a standard that we can drill the center through and use it as a spacer. See what we can come up with. How about these nuts? That should work. We're probably going to take them down a little bit on the uh, grinder. We'll make circles out of them on the outside. We'll use them for spacers. Might have to go too thick maybe. And the idea is you want to be able to, to bolt it have the bolt crushed down on a spacer, but still have the gas tank have some room to go move around. Kind of think of like an engine on a motor mount. Same idea. You want to be able to have some flex with it. The, the tank can flex around and move around, especially when your knees are whacking into it, that kind of thing, without cracking the tank, but yet not have the hardware want to go back out. So that's the whole idea, I guess, behind that. So how will two of those make for us? That's about just right, huh? And we can get two of those ground down for each side and we'll use those for spacers.
is pretty good. They'll probably be a little shorter. Will the two of them, as long as they don't run in each other, right? I'll cut them down a little bit. That will be fine. That'll do. I guess before we put that tank on there, there's a kind of funkiness going on with wiring. I would surmise that they are just going to the headlight over here. And again, you can see where that one looks like it's broke off from... Is there an end on there? I'm not quite sure what's happening with that one. This one's pretty much self-explanatory. So we can go yellow to yellow. White, I don't know what's happening with that. We think one would be a ground. Let's go ohm it out. See if we can find out if one of these are ground. And you know, again, we start the bike up because see if we get voltage are coming through. Because there's only two wires coming out of the headlight. So one's gotta be hot and one's gotta be ground. And I would, the third one, Maybe it kills, I don't know. Maybe it was some kind of switch or something here at one time. Hard to say. There's also two going out. See, so the two for the tail light are solid yellow and black with a white tracer. Black with a white tracer would be, I have a feeling that's plugged in the wrong area. And we should have the, that one should be going there. Are the ends correct? So that's female. As long as that's a male, and then the yellow one goes into there. I have a feeling maybe one, because this is set up for two. They wouldn't have put this on there unless two wires went in it. Maybe this other one was power feeding it. I can get a meter, go pro around. Let's go figure out which one's the ground at least. My battery's getting a little low, and the meter's kind of dim. So if you just Short these two wires out, she get zeros right across the board. So that's kind of what we're looking for. We may get a signal on a bunch of different ones. Let's go ground out to the case somewhere. All right. There's a good chance that these are going to give us a couple of ohms too, though. Let's open. And what's that one? Oh, it's counting off. This might be power because what's going to do it's it's going through a coil that makes power down below, so you're going to get some resistance on it. The one that was open was what the solid yellow one. Yeah, you got to keep your fingers off of at least one side. You got to keep your fingers off of because it'll read across your your body. Yeah, that one was open. If you put your fingers on it, see if it, it'll do it. If my hands are wet enough, there you go. So if your fingers are on the leads, it'll screw screw up your numbers. I'm going to buzz across the headlight too and see if the element is any good. This is a 40 year old bike after all. Let's get rid of that. I don't think that's supposed to be there. Yeah, it's open. We should get like across a bulb, like six ohms. Yeah, so that bulb's blown anyway. Yeah, there's so definitely something missing from here because that's a female, female, female. The only male to female connection is right here. And, you know, just like people, male, female. So that is a male connector. Female has the receiver. Male is the emitter. <laughs> so I, I have a feeling there's probably a switch here that is just missing. So I'm not going to be that concerned about it. Again, it's just for the headlights. We already had spark. As long as the bike shuts off with the kill switch, I'm going to go clean a bunch of this up with uh, my version of wire ties and kind of uh, dress that up a little bit and we'll see you got getting that gas tank on top. So it's all bolted up. There's that rubber snubber up there. I have a feeling that's not doing anything because we have the two bolts holding the front of the tank. That may need to be slid to the back because it seems like the back just has you know, too much movement. If I grab the seat, I want to see what the, how the seat is going to lock into it. Because it like, like it's got a key right there and then this locks into that tab on the frame. Let's just go kind of see if, um, how's that going to work? All of it's the same time, yeah. Let's go slide up. That goes in. I don't know. Seems like it supports the tank. I'm going to go pop that off one more time. I'm going to see if I can go slide that rubber piece back to here. I have a feeling that's where it's supposed to be. And I would say the tie wraps definitely kind of give it away too, right? 
I wouldn't exactly call that factory. It's got kind of a rub stain. I wonder if that's even part of the bike at all. I wonder if somebody added that. I would think more likely right there. Like I said, there's nothing. The bolts in the front will support the front of the tank. The back is just missing. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go reattach that with a tie wrap back there. See if that helps us at all. That's better. It's not, the, the plastic isn't rubbing on the metal anymore. It's got a little bit of cushion on the back side. Like I said, the front just kind of supports it. All right, now how's our seat going to go? Fit. I think it should be more of the same, right? Yeah. That kind of locks everything together. I like that better. I'm going to do a, a little uh, scrub on the seat, see if it'll come a little bit cleaner. And we'll be good with that part. And what we got the rear fender really to kind of go screw with is about the last. Oh, the air box. So we got to put the air box on it. Got the air filter box on. But the filter that came out of it was junk, and I don't have one. So this is the. The cage that helps support it, but it's the exact size of the filter. So I got filter material. This stuff is used for uh, high-end computers, like in a, a big cabinet in an office somewhere. I'm going to go cut that out. and It's fairly thick. It's probably about three quarters of an inch thick. Okay, how is that? Like that? That's a fairly decent fit, and then this. <laughs> you playing that game, right? Is that still wrong? It's still wrong. I know it came out of there. We're getting warm. <laughs> We're going to eyeball that one. And it goes like that. <laughs> Was well, that so difficult? Kind of it's sandwiched in between, and this cover goes on and locks it down. The air comes in through that hole, through this cover, and down through the intake. That'll work out pretty good for us. And that's what we have to work with for a rear fender. It looks like this corner's already ripped out, it's still there, we still have it at least. And then the other side, the bolt hole's there, but it had no, it had a tie wrap, I think. In it so let's go wash these pieces up take this off we will try a soldering iron first see if we just kind of melt the cracks back together if not we'll just uh, drill the holes and do the uh, either tie wraps or uh, me mechanics wire to stitch it back together and I guess we'll have to go find a, a bolt of sorts for uh, that situation got it clamped together washed it off real quick and the old school soldering irons what I'm gonna try doing is putting some Heat up inside that. We'll just try mushing her together and see if that'll work out for us. It's not super hot, but let's see how this does. I don't want to overdo it, you know. Got to draw it to the center. Take a little from each side, and we'll make like a a stitch, kind of like if you're welding. I think the idea is just so you don't mess it up too much on the back side. So I'm going to go continue with that. I got to get in front of it a little bit where you guys are standing. See if it works for us. Far from perfect, but it worked better than using just a regular soldering iron because you were able to move, you know, much more material at a time and kind of walk it across the crack to try to feed it in. I didn't want to do anything on the top because I think it's just going to make it show even more. I won't say if it'll just for so yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll survive a crash, but it should stay together just for normal riding. Would be my guess. Let's just crack right now. <laughs> Alright, let's get that bolted back on there. Fender looks pretty good. Should hold. We've got the side covers to go deal with now. Yeah, actually, I don't think there's all that much to deal with. Just get them popped on. Is that right? No, it's got to go back. I should line up with the tank, right? And we got a bolt on that side. We'll do the same on the other side. Let's look at the fuel line. I like these spring loaded clamps, that style. I'm just gonna launch them across the room. 
over the the uh, ones you have a screw in the center of it and the reason why this fuel line over time will harden up with the ethanol in the fuel you know, if you have an area where you can get non-ethanol fuel you the greater but it hardens these fuel lines up it gets it'll get rock hard They're, generally they won't leak they won't break they'll just get very stiff like to the point where you got to cut it off with wire cutters when you're done uh, later on to go change it if you go to you know replace it but these clamps hold constant tension on them and it doesn't crush them out whereas if you do a regular hose clamp that has the threads on it and it closes down it closes down to a certain point the line hardens up and kind of pushes the material out around it and then it, it will loosen up and start leaking around it with this it first of all it doesn't crush it as bad but over time if it does get a little bit of uh, playing in it it still takes that gap up it constantly holds tension on it no matter what the uh, temperature that it's going through or the life, ex uh, not life expectancy, the no, life expectancy, we'll go with that. It just kind of keeps an even tension on it. And then later on too, you actually you can take them off, you're trail riding or something, you gotta go kick some water out. You actually can just take them off with your hands and wiggle it off and put them back on. Well, I think other than putting some gas in it and oiling the chain, we're good and bolting the seat down. We'll get a couple of bolts in that. Put some gas in it. Actually, we'll leave the bolts out of it for now in case we want to go pop it up and uh, see if there's any issues. Let's get some gas in it, fire it up, see what she does. Think I can do it without a funnel? I'm going to put two-stroke gas in it. Or remix, I should say. It does have an oiler on it. I'm going to make a mess. I know I am. Ah. I don't know if the oiler works. So we're going to run it at some time at a point. I can actually take the line off of it. Let's not get overzealous. We can take a line off it and see if it's feeding oil to it. Or rather let it run a little on the rich side at first than to not have any oil in it whatsoever. What'd you do with the cap? I saw you hide it. Right, hopefully that filled up or is filling up the carb. We'll give her a couple of kicks. I got to get rid of that mess first, though. That might be a, <laughs> all the crap be vibrating off the bench. Yeah, let's see what we get. Let's choke on. You need a lightener screwdriver for tweaking the carb. Now that it's got a constant fuel supply. So I can stab myself in the uh, you know what. I think that's neutral. fuel mixture on the uh, idle side because it wouldn't want to idle. <laughs> you know what that means, don't you? Smooth. If it was a person, it would have cotton mouth. 
I'm just gonna go dribble. This is barn chain oil or chainsaw. These chains and sprockets are so far gone, but we can help it out a little. I don't even bother putting a new uh, new chain on it because the sprockets are just gonna eat it up anyway. But until they burn out, we will try and help it with some of that. And the barn chain oil is kind of tacky. It kind of wants to stick around. Yeah, front sprockets had it. Doesn't even want to roll over it. The alignment's good. It's just <laughs> let's see if we get rid of its tail. You don't need all of that sticking out. It's gonna you wipe out. That's gonna hurt. Let's see right about there. It's a little dark. Anyway, this line right here is the oil feed for the oil injection. Don't know if it works. I'm gonna go plug that intake leak right there. I'm gonna go fire it up. I'm gonna go see if we get some oil coming out of that. And if that's still functioning, that will tell me whether to do a premix on the gas or not. Cause right now I got premix in it. So I'm 50 to one in the tank. And then I'm also mixing 51, 50 to one with the automatic oil and knocking me down to 25 to one really kind of thick on the oil uh it'll foul plugs and it causes it to run lean because there's not enough fuel for the air the fuel is being replaced by gas if that makes any sense anyway let's go see if we get what we get I'll leave whatever gas is in there for this round. It's only about, about maybe a quart in there. And then the next fuel that we'll put in, we'll just put regular gas in it.
like the soft sand. That's a lot of fun in a little package. Oh boy, that's a doozy. And here's your problem and solution. Here it takes to go and get it primed again. Hopefully, you kick Give it a second. Kick it less time than Jay had to kick his new one. that big <laughs> you got a river
You can rev it more. It'll rev real high. We need about like 10 of these. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, it could rev a lot high. It's not good for bogging. It doesn't like that kind. No, <laughs> it wants to go. That's the bump. <laughs> That's the one I'll get you. One more. Goes. Yeah. For, for a little tiny size. I think I got you beat, but I think it's going to be a fun competition. We're going to see. We're going to see. <laughs> like a before and after right there. <laughs> it's great. What is that? Did you ever figure out what that was? Yamaha? I don't have any idea what it is, what the yeah. frame is. Huh. Cool. So VW Net 1967. We'll be gluing this together, we with his son. And then we would do a little trail riding out back. Yep. Well, that little thing is fun. That worked out quite well for uh, what it was. It needs a little bit of love. Again, you can go for some tires. Uh, the chain and sprockets can get a new set, but we'll run them until they fail. <laughs> uh, other than that, everything seems good. The drivetrain seems fine. Trans is good. It shifts okay. Clutch doesn't slip. Uh, clutch cable is a little on the iffy side. I think it's starting to uh, lose a couple of strands and get stretched out, but it doesn't slip on it. The adjustment's all maxed out on it. You can see right there. But for our 31 year old bike, we'll see what those uh, main China bikes are 30 years from now. Three years and they're junk. So this one's already 31 years old and she's still kicking and uh, <laughs> didn't exactly have a loving life through that whole time period too. All right, guys, that I'm going to sign off and thank you all for hanging out with me. Do a little bit of wrenching, have a little bit of fun with some cheap stuff from the side of the road yard sale. And uh, we'll do it again sometime. Until then, later. Bye.